Hello you guys. This is a serious video I'm about to talk about. Um, it's a, some explicit content in this video. If you have children, get them out of the way. I do not want those kids to hear the things I'm about to say in this video. Some things that are not meant for kids' ears. So, get the kids out of the way, okay? Just letting you know, alright? Alright, y'all. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Sweet Tea, a.k.a. the Talented Sweet Tea, and this is Table Talk. So, you guys, today's video is going to be very, very interesting. I'm doing a story time. If you're new to my channel, I'm glad to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're in the place to be because your girl, Sweet Tea, is off the chair. Off the chain, girl. You feel me? And fellas, you feel me? But also, don't forget to subscribe, okay? Comment and like. It helps my channel. All right, so let's get on with the show, honey. This is some juicy tea for your AA, okay? All right, so what I'm talking about today is um my experience. When I became homeless one time, I had to live with this girl. And what I call this video is like living in a whorehouse. You feel me? Because that's exactly what it was. And I had no idea that that's what it was. Okay? Okay, let's get into it. My, okay, it was this girl that I knew for years and years. Um... You know, we were friends way back. Um, we used to hang out. She lived with me. She didn't live with me, but she hung out with me and uh, babysitted for me and all this here in the past. So we we lost contact years passed by. And I finally ran up on her again. And when I ran up on her again, at the same time I became um, homeless, like, I was living with someone and they told me to get out. So I had kids as well. And I got out. I talked to her first and I told her my situation. She told me hers that she lived with two other females. But yet and still, it's okay that I come and stay with her. Okay, so I was happy, you know. I moved my little stuff up in there, and I and I was coming along with my two kids, and they were not little kids; they were teens. So, as I got up and I began to see what was going on up in there, you feel me? Um, she had some of the wildest chicks that was staying with her. They turned out to be wow. They turned out to be whores. And see, she was big and obese, you feel me? She had a lot of health problems. She she was about a good 350 pounds. She was short-witted and she was large. She always had been that way, you know, when she was my friend back in the day. So I'm thinking, you know, sometimes you think when people are overweight that they be real chill. You know what I'm saying? Laid back. You know, have a like if they have a, a apartment that it ain't gonna be no problems, but it was the opposite. Now she wasn't the whore, but her friends were. They were cute. They had nice shapes, and they used that to their advantage. They were ghetto and ratchet. But however, I kept to myself. She gave me a spot to sleep in, and my boy. My um, I mean my kids a spot to sleep in, and that's what we did. We, we chill. We went to bed at night, but as I was trying to sleep at night, I would notice a whole lot of activity. Them girls was bringing dudes in left and right, and I walked up on a whole lot of stuff. You feel me? I seen a whole lot of stuff when I was there. 
you know, coming and going because I wouldn't stay hung up in there all day. I felt some type of way and I felt like I had to get out. And at the time, my baby daddy, he had his own spot, but he was in a rooming house. So I would get out and go over there with him and hang out. But I would complain. I would tell him the things I'm seeing, what I'm witnessing. I would tell him, ooh, I cannot wait. I would ask him, can you hurry up and help me, you know, get up out this spot? He would tell me, hang on. He trying to work and he trying to get his little money together. And it's just a matter of time. You know, I had, when I came there too, I brought a deep freezer. I would put food in it. They would, um, while I'm gone, because I would stay for two and three days at a time, whatever food I put in the refrigerator and in the freezer, they would eat it up. They would go in it. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. The thing is what I had seen. Okay, here's one instance. I'm going to tell y'all how this goes in instances. Little clips, you feel me? One time, I walked up. I was trying to go to the bathroom. And I walked in on the girl giving the guy some head. One of them little ratchet females. All bent over. Giving the dude some you feel me? And so they looked up at me, smiled, and told me to come join in. Come on, come on, come on. You want to join in? I was like, uh-uh, no way. And I walked out of the. So I'm, I sat back in the room. I was like, whoa, what the heck? They get down like, like I said, I'm telling y'all this thing in instances, in little clips, right? That was one clip, one little instance. All right. Oh, I hope y'all like my earring too. Let me stop for a minute. I made these earrings. This me up on this thing. You feel me? Yeah, I make earrings and stuff. I used to sell them. I don't sell them no more though. But uh, I got to get back into that right there. Yeah, that's what I do. But um, yeah, anyway, like I was saying, another instance, another clip. Okay, like I came in trying to go in my room but they was all loaded up in my room they had all kinds of dudes up over there they was having a little get together in my room so um but see the thing about the room it wasn't just my room it was two beds in that room my home girl the big girl i was telling you about she slept in one bed and i slept in the other bed those females that were so wretched they slept out in the living room but this this day, they was all up over there. They had a lot of dudes up in there. And guess what? They had a gun. It looked like a sawed-off shotgun. So one of the girls was just playing with it, cocking it, and doing all kinds of stuff, and aiming it at people, and all this stuff, and jumping around with it and laughing. And I'm trying to sit on the bed, and I'm, like, dodging the the, the barrel of the gun. I'm, I'm thinking in my head, oh, my gosh, what is she doing? She had on her little shorty shorts. The dudes were just looking at her. She just uh, flexing and trying to act like she all this and that. I'm like, ooh, what have I stepped into up in this place? See, all of that that they was doing was all against my, I mean, the type of person that I am and what I stand for. I'm not used to that. I didn't come from that type of environment. You feel me? So it was tripping me out. I was blowed. And I know the dangers of guns and people playing with guns. You feel me? Because I've heard a lot of stories where people playing with guns, even kids playing with guns and end up shooting each other, shooting themselves. I even know a dude from um, the projects that he was playing with a, somebody, a girl was playing with a gun and the gun went off and, um, and shot the boy and killed them right down the porch or whatever. So anyway, I was like, hey, no, nah. I just um, got on up and excused myself. I left up out of there and went and sat in the living room, let them have their fun. Totally. Anyway, I was just scared of the gun situation anyway because I got a brother who got shot. And to this day, he's paralyzed. So I don't play when it comes down to guns. So I got on up out the house and went for a walk. You know, you know these walks when you worried and you just got to walk and you thinking. And, and worry, that's that type of walk, you feel me? I'm worried now. I don't want to be in this place. Okay, that's that instance. That's that clip what I was talking about. That's another clip, another instance that happened. Okay, another one that happened. 
Okay, I had done got dressed all up. Every time I go somewhere, I make sure I look extra sexy. I had on this nice little tight, little form-fitting dress. I mean, skirt with splits going down the side. It was my favorite little, it was kind of silky looking like snake skin. It was real cute with a nice blouse, my earrings, my makeup, the way y'all see me now. You feel me? I forgot what hairstyle I had. But anyway, I was looking good. They had company over as usual. They always just sat around with, the females had a bunch of dudes around, sitting around, all around in the house, a whole bunch of guys. And they are the center of attraction with their little shorter shorts and they coochie print showing and all this old stuff and the booties hanging out and all this other kind of stuff and they wilding and acting wild and hopping in niggas laps and all this but anyway I'm trying to walk through there they you know they hadn't seen me because I was low key quiet I'm trying to I'm smelling good I'm trying to leave up out of there for a minute then here come one of the dudes say hey come here I came over to see what he wanted right so when I came over to see what he wanted, he they was all lined up on the couch looking at me like I'm new meat, the girls too. And um, they went on, I mean, the dude like grabbed me to him, pulled my skirt up in front of everybody. Let me see what you working with up under this skirt. He say, where they do that at? I'm like, <laughs> what the and I was like hey don't do that but he snatched me so hard he did that right and I was trying to rebel and tell him uh uh don't do that next thing I know he snatched me harder into his lap and I fell into his lap guess what dude did dude had done and they all like ravenous lions and all of them Three or four of them sitting on this side of the couch. Three or four of them sitting on this couch, side of the couch. Girls, guys. Girls, guys. And they looking at me like I'm some kind of, you know, hot meat or whatever. So the dude, like like I told you, he snatched me in his lap. He pulls out my breast. He goes to rubbing on it real quick and trying to put it in his mouth. Where they do that at? Who is he? I don't know him. Then the rest of them, they went to reaching over, you know, trying to touch me too. Mm, carrying on. Oh, ooh, look at this. Look at you. And then my the homegirl that let me stay there, the big girl, she was like, man, y'all ain't right. Why y'all? She had the nerve to be getting jealous and stuff. And, and man, y'all ain't right. Y'all treat her like this and that, and y'all don't do me like that all this time. And they was like, shut up. And I was like... I just kind of went along with it just for a few seconds. Uh, I was looking around. I was really confused. I was like, oh, my gosh, because he had a grip on me and wouldn't let me go. So I kind of snatched away and was like, uh-uh, stop. You know, don't do that. I don't know you. And they was like, ooh, you got some pretty breasts. Ooh, I ain't know you had it like that. Sweet tea and... Especially when he pulled up my skirt, too, when I was standing up. Ooh, all that, because they saw my panties. They saw it all. Then he just snatched me down like that. I've never been so embarrassed in my life. Okay, that was one instance. What else? Okay, they was talking about having a party. Um, Excuse me, it feels like something in my eye, but... They was talking about having a party. Um, they had done drug out. They was getting prepared for the party. They was going. They was talking about having on their lingerie. It was going to be some type of orgy party or whatever. And um, they was gonna. Uh, they was gonna have a lot of girls over. It was gonna be nothing but a girl party. And they they had like drug out this uh, um, bin, you know, like a storage bin full of dildos full of sex toys I never seen like it had like maybe 30 or 40 different types of toys in it I saw a bunch of different color dildos Caucasian ones and chocolate color covered ones colored ones I was like these girls wild as hell look at this I would sit around be quiet and kind of listen and look kind of laugh if they look my way (laughs) 
little fake laugh. I was like, these girls here, wow. Okay, that was one instance. I didn't stay there for the little orgy party. I left up out of there, honey. Every time I knew something was finna go down, a whole bunch of them was finna be over there, I got ghosts. You feel me? So then another instance, like I said, I'm telling it, telling you, it in clips and instances, another clip. And this went on a lot while I'm trying to sleep at night. They had it going on at night. I'm like, what? Wait, what? All this noise, like, um, for one thing, for one thing, they stayed smoking weed and snorting powder. I ran up on that all the time when I'm trying to exit the door and go where I had to go. Like I said, I got up out of there all the time, so I would walk through the living room and just see them sitting around with a line of powder snorting it up their nose. We smoking it. My homegirl with her medical conditions is overweight as she was and uh, sick as she was, high blood pressure, diabetes, all this stuff. She was trying to keep up with them. She, they was influencing her to do the same thing they were doing. I saw her take a hit of some powder. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was like blowed out. I started arguing at her in front of them. Cause I was authoritative too. I was like, you need to stop. You need, you don't even need to be doing this. You sick. You got all these health issues. You can't be doing this girl. You'll be done killed yourself. They were sitting up there listening and smoking their weed, cock back, kind of looking at me, smoking their weed and stuff. I was like, ain't no shame in my game and I ain't hardly scared. I'm going to speak up because this girl here, you know, when I see something wrong, I feel like I got to speak up. But she like, oh, I got this. Ain't nothing wrong with this. I'm cool. I'm good. I've been doing this for a long time. I'm an OG at this. I was like, all right then. Okay then. And I went on. So um, that's one thing that I stayed walking up on them drinking beer, smoking weed, snorting powder. I already, you know, I'm going in and out the house, you know, staying for two and three days at a time, coming back with my food being ate up and walking right back up into the mess, the ratchetness. So I was like, every time I go somewhere, and at the time I ain't had no car, but I did have a bus card. I'd be catching the city bus and hauling tail going over my baby daddy, my baby daddy room and house, like talking to him like, they this, they that, they this, and I'm sick of this. So anyway. Like I said, I'm trying to sleep at night. Me and my 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 kids, they um kept getting gone too. Like I got gone, they was gone too a lot. They was barely there too because they were witnessing what was going on. And at least they were teens and they was able to go as they pleased too. They were up in the teens, close to 18 years old. So they were hauling tail too. But um, and they were girls. I just let out the information, it's whatever. So anyway, um, like I was saying, they um, when I'm trying to sleep at night, they having sex and they loud and they doing all this carrying on. All this carrying on. I heard all this moaning and groaning and carrying on the girls carrying on. The nigga putting down what he putting down and the girl carrying on. But I'm tossing, I'm turning, and I can't sleep, and she loud as ever. And I'm like, God dang, where's the respect at for me? Where's the respect at for people up in this house? They know I got some some kids up in this house. Why is they doing all this carrying on? Like, it didn't make no sense. So the next day they want to be all happy all got on their little nuke then took a shower and got on their little hot shorts and all that and everybody gone now the niggas gone but now they feeling good and feeling they self because of what they experienced that night one of them well i take that back nigga wasn't gone she had a boyfriend he was hanging around then i guess he was the one that put down that's right that's what it was he was the one that she was all carrying on with so the next day they up in there that's what i meant they sitting up now, they talking, they playing and all this here. And so I make the joke, I was like, I heard y'all last night. Y'all was tripping, huh? They laughed, they thought that was fun to hear coming from me that I was saying that. But they don't know, in my mind, I was like, uh-uh. 
I ain't on this right here. Okay. So, you know, while all this stuff going on and I'm living in the mix of this whole house, I was making master plans. I had done got up me some bread, a.k.a. moolah, a.k.a. money, honey. And I had done put down on me a place to stay, baby, honey. And the day came that I was able to move. You feel me? And I was so, so happy to be getting up out that joint. You feel me? Because that went against everything I stand for and every, everything I love. I was scared. You know, it was all the wrong people up in that joint from day to day. They, you know, it was all kinds of hood dudes, whole bunch of them. And I just was like, ooh, oh, no, no, ma'am. I got to get up out of here. And I made it. I got that place, told my homegirl, I'm about to leave. I'm about to bounce. I got my own place. I got me a driver. And I went to getting all my stuff up. I trying to get all my stuff up out of there. She went to talking trash and saying what I was not going to get. I said, my exact words, ho, you, you got me in the mix. I'm getting my stuff up out of here. And don't try me. I'm getting my stuff up out of here. And that's point blank, period. You feel me? And she said, no, you're not. This and that saying all kinds of stuff. I told her. I'm about to call the popos. When I said that, it was like several dudes sitting all around up in there. They went to getting up, leaving. When they saw me grab that phone and went to making that 911 call, oh, they went to bouncing. They was gone. That house cleared out so quick. It wasn't nothing but me and them girls then. You feel me? They sitting around looking scared now. I'm walking around strutting my stuff. Looking good with my little tight clothes on, booty all in there, because I know I had it. And I'm letting the people know over the phone what it was, what it is. I need assistance. Y'all get out here. Cause I'm, and so when they came out there, I let them, let them know that I'm trying to get my stuff up out of there. And she refusing me to get my stuff. Could you escort me in this house so I get my stuff? And they stood, the, uh, the popo stood right around. Like there was my bodyguards, honey. It was straight. And let me get my stuff up out of there. So I'm toting it. Me and my helpers. I got me some helpers. And we all grabbing things and toting things up out of there. But a few things them girls had done took from me like a CD collection. All kinds of music videos and all kinds of good jukin music. You feel me? They had, I mean, stacks on stacks. They had done hid that there. They had done took that there from me. So I missed that there. Because I had so much I was trying to get to. I missed that. So anyway, I took what I could and what I remembered and what I knew about and, and got on up out of them. I was happy. Moved on into my new place. Never have I been so happy to get up into my new place up out of a whore house. And I never want to experience nothing like that again in my life. You feel me? You know, y'all, it's something else when we become, you know, homeless. We Sometimes we're going to slip and fall. We're going to lose that income. We're going to be it losing a job, benefits, whatever. And we're going to ultimately one day, you never know. You just never know. Even you can get down sick and lose your job because you had so many days of sickness or whatever having to tend to a child and you had to miss so many days and you got fired and then with this COVID-19 going on no telling what else and how we can end up you know being homeless from that situation and a lot of people have because they shut down a lot of jobs due to COVID-19 and now we got some homeless people you, you feel me I saw this one lady that's homeless on social media on YouTube she was a big businesswoman, and she's black, but she lost it all. Now she round, uh, walking around looking throw, you know, with raggedy clothes on. And now that lady, the story I saw, she pushing buggies and stuff. She say she lost her house, her cars. She lost it all, all her belongings. And this is what, what she has come down to 
walking around the way she is all dirty but you can see in her face that she she is somebody that she come from a nice way of living but COVID-19 shut it all down for her but you know I said that to say this like we never know I'm telling you y'all we never know when we're going to be in that kind of position and then we got to reach out to people that we do know to stay with them and then you never know what you're getting into when you go stay with these people what type of household they run you may think you know them but you don't know nobody like you think you know you have to be inside to really know and i was shocked and i went through it there at that house you feel me so okay so I was on the on the grind now. I feel I done moved on up out of there. So the next day though, I'm my soul uneasy. I'm like my CDs over there, my videos over there. I gotta go and get my stuff. So me and my one of my daughters, we walked up. We went up over there, walked up in the place. The two girls on guard. They know what I'm coming there for, and I spot them. My CDs and my all my stuff. They sitting up on a rack. You know, like the little tall little rack, which you slide the CDs down onto. It's like two of them sitting up on the, uh, by the TV up on the stand, TV stand or whatever. I say, yeah, yeah, what's up? I say, I came to get my CDs and my DVDs, my DVDs, movies and my CDs and all this. They tell me, you ain't leaving nothing here. That's not here. I say, that look like mine right there. That's my stuff right there. They said, they was like standing there like bodyguards with their hands crossed in front of them and blocking me from walking over there. And I was trying to walk up on it and go get it, but I could tell they was like ready to throw some hands. They was like blocking and sliding this way and sliding that way and telling me that's not yours, getting kind of loud. That's our CDs, these are not yours, these are ours. I say, listen, those are my stands that they own everything. I know that's my CDs, that's my stuff. And they kept carrying on. So I had a moment of silence. My daughter looking, I'm looking. Shall I fight over these CDs? Do I want to throw some hands about these CDs? My DVD movies and all that? And am I willing to go to jail right now? Because that's all that's going to happen. Either jail or hell. If I decide to go to throwing some blows with these girls. See, I kind of felt like fighting. But then again, I think about everything. I, I had a lot to lose. I ain't had time to be going to jail. I thought about again. Can, can I can I or should I call the popos? Should I get them involved in this? I thought, nah, I just went through that though. I ain't for all that though. You know, cause you get tired of calling them people into situations, you know. And y'all see what's going on these days. You call the popos and sometimes it can go south. It can go way south because they can get physical with you you know i ain't got to get into explaining all that but you know what can go south when they when they get involved so anyway i ain't feel like getting into all that i said to myself i had to give myself a quick talk within my mind is it worth it girl it ain't nothing but materialistic stuff girl don't worry about it you can get it all back one day girl if you die you can't take it with you don't do it don't fight over it don't call nobody over it. Let it go. You don't want you to possibly get battered up in you. Because, see, you can fight. And I know I got hands, but I don't fight no more. But I know I got them hands because when I used to fight in the day, back in the day, I used to be throwing down. But I just didn't want to take it there. And I got my daughter, too. But she was old. She was in her 20s. I'm like, nah. I just walked on up out of there and let them have it. But... I went home and then throughout the months and years, I was missing my stuff. I was remembering a lot of stuff I had in them CDs like Kaya. I had Kaya, you know the rapper Kaya. I had some of her Tampa videos when she used to ride the streets of Tampa and talk and do vlogs and stuff. I had some exclusive stuff on Kaya before she even made it real big the way she is. It was like a special DVD with all Kaya videos on their street videos. You feel me? Before she made it big. And I don't know how I came across that video, but I had it. But I had a lot of stuff. I had Jodeci. I had um, Jagged Edge. Music CD, music DVDs that you could put into the DVD player and look at. I had a lot of stuff, man. I had 
Juking music, like I said, club music. You know, all that. But anyway, y'all, I'm going to have to cut the story short. That's my story. Live What it was like being homeless and living in a whorehouse. And uh, everything. I hope y'all like the story. Comment, like, and subscribe. Hope y'all really enjoyed the story. Hit the bell notification button. So you'll be notified when I do what? Drop them bangers! And that's on everything. And y'all see me missing my tooth. It is what it is. My tooth came out recently. I had a goal in my mouth and it came out. Anyway, y'all, be blessed. <laughs> Peace. Love. Bye.